Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I am doing a really cool series on analyzing isolated vocals from some amazing songs and just legendary pieces of music. Um, but before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. That'd be super cool. Uh, don't forget, I have a singing course for you guys that are interested in wanting to learn how to sing or if you're an intermediate singer or an advanced singer, uh, I have an incredible course. You can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com uh, where the proof is in the singing. And I have a free singing forum there with over, over 20,000 people discussing different styles of singing, um, different techniques that KTVA uses, etc. So uh, let's just get dive right in. Now I'm going to do Def Leppard. The song is Rock of Ages. Of course the singer is Joe Elliott. And I had the luxury uh, quite a while back in the 80s of being backstage at a Monsters of Rock concert festival in Germany. And um, on the bill was the Scorpions, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, bon Jovi, Macaulay Shanker, and of course, Def Leppard was on the bill. And there was a few, you know, Dora Pesh and some others. But anyway, uh, so I got to hear Joe Elliott warm up just before he went out on stage. They had these um, kind of like backstage trailers all over and all the, all the artists got their own trailer. And so literally, I kid you not, as I was listening to him warm up, it was about 15, 20 minutes, he would go, ah, all right. Ah! Yeah, 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 yeah! Oh! Ah! 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 And he would just do these kind of random things. So I am not telling you that this was technically correct. I'm telling you how he warmed up. So it was just more like, all right! All right! You know, you would just kind of do this over and over again. And it's kind of interesting because he actually does some of that stuff in the songs themselves, as we're going to hear. Now, I'm going to break this up into two parts. I'm going to do an analysis. I'm going to talk about singing secrets revealed and some tutorials on how to get to some of the sounds that he has. And I've done some Def Leppard myself. I'm going to put that in the description for you to hear how I did photograph and, you know, pour some sugar on me. We've got that and some others um, from me and my other students. I'll put all that in the description so you can click on the links and see how we did um, singing some Def Leppard. But let's dive right in. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to point something else out too. I'm going to um, play this. Now, I have auditioned this in advance. And the vocal is really dry. There's not a lot of effect on it. So I went ahead and I loaded this up into my radar system so that we could add some effect to hear what it actually kind of sounds more like in the record rather than being so bone dry. But the cool thing about it being raw and bone dry um, is that, uh, and kind of crude actually, because there's no effect at all, that you can see it's not as mysterious and as crazy and wow as we remember it in this giant mix with big guitars and big drums and bass and keys and all this stuff, background vocals for days going off, you get a chance to hear how it really was and then you might even be able to see yourself doing the same thing, okay? So with that said, let's do this, here we go. <laughs> Starts out laughing. All right. Okay. All right, right? I told you, those are the kinds of things you would do warming up in this little uh, trailer in the backstage. I got something to say. Yeah, it's been on a burnout. Yeah, then fade away. Now, on that word fade away, and you listen really closely, this isn't as dry as it might come across. All of a sudden, there is a doubler on it, okay? So let's listen to Fade Away again, and I'm gonna point some things out that you can take a listen to that you might be interested in. Check that, listen to the word Fade Away when a doubler comes in. It's been on a burnout! Right here. Yeah. Then Fade Away! Hear the vo multiple voices? All right! See, that's what I said, that's what you do in the trailer. All right, right? There's not a lot of technique to that, but, and he sings some really, to photograph is a hard song to sing. I remember doing that going, gosh, I hope I make it to the end of this one. So um, I'm not saying it wasn't hard, but so. Ow! See? Ow! Look out! Gonna start a fire! You know what I'm talking about! Now imagine, I want you to put yourself, if we can get past the Joe Elliott worship and the, the you know the the wow factor of this was out of the song and we rem remember it being so iconic and so big and so legendary. If you walked into a studio 
Think about this, and I'm not belittling Joe at all, but I'm just, I want you to put some flesh and blood on this. If you walked into a studio and you went, all right, you betcha. <laughs> and you just kind of did that, and the engineer's like looking at the producer, and he's looking at the band. He's going, is this guy gonna sing anytime soon, <laughs> right? And he was just kind of making those noises and stuff, and it's vibe and it's attitude, and I get that, and that's what's cool about it too, right? But I just want to point out that it, there's so much personality, and it's just confidence. Remember I said a singer is only a singer because they have the guts to be one? And we kind of hear a little bit of that going on here, though Joe is, again, he hit some pretty pretty incredible notes, but. Come on, rise up, gather round, rock this place to the ground, burn it up, let's go for bro. Now, I'm gonna back this up again, because I want to do this a line at a time. So rise up, gather round. He's really just compressing a lot of his sound. Now, where have we heard this before? And this is gonna be kinda of interesting. Well, Bon Scott, Brian Johnson, right? That same kind of rise up, really kind of compressed in the throat sound. And then he kind of goes, you know, in through his head voice and out a lot. And you don't really notice that he's doing that because it kind of sounds like he's singing really hard and heavy, but he's barely singing at all. Rise up, gather round, rock this place to the ground. Right? He's got the real compressed sound. Now, the reason I say, where have we heard that before is because who produced this album? Mutt Lang, Robert John Lang. Guess what he produced? You probably know the answer. Early ACDC. He was a producer of ACDC, Def Leppard, went on to marry and produce Shania Twain, right? You can even hear some of the earlier Shania Twain with the big drums and background vocals. Like, wow, it's like Def Leppard meets Shania or something, right? So I want to back this up too, though. You can also hear the punches and overlays of the vocals. So this wasn't even close to a one take thing. Every single line, in some cases words, were punched. So listen really, it takes away a lot of the mystery of this. Listen closely. Gonna start a fire. Gonna start a fire. You know what I'm talking about. Come on, rise up, gather round, rock this place to the ground. On rock this place, if you listen really closely, it's a little louder in volume and it sounds a little closer to the microphone. It's an obvious punch. So he didn't sing this consecutively. Those two lines were so, sung uh, separately, right? Let's back it up one more time. And I'm, I'll try not to do too much of this so you don't, I don't belabor this too much, but I think it's pretty interesting. We're listening to one of the most iconic songs of all time. And how did they do it? What kind of a singer was he? Did he do it in one take? Did he do it a line at a time? Well, we're, we're finding that out together right now. Check it out. Let's back it up a little bit one more time. Take a listen. Here we go. Look out! Gonna start a fire! You know what I'm talking about! Come on! Here we go. Rise up, gather round, rock this place to the ground. Burn it up, let's go for broke! Watch the night go up! All right, now listen to the k of go for broke watch the night go up and smoke. You can hear the watch the night go up and smoke overlay the word broke. Go for broke, watch the night go up and smoke. So they probably put that on a separate track, tried to get it as close to the last word to make it sound like it was a contiguously sung line, but it's not. So you can again hear another punch of an overlay. Okay, let's continue. And smoke, rock on, drive me crazy, yeah. Now, you think about all this range, right? He's got all this range. That's head voice. Drive this crazy, yeah! He's not, drive this crazy, yeah! He's not pulling chest into the sound. Let's listen to it again. He's in falsetto, a reinforced compressed falsetto, a lot like Brian Johnson, somewhat like Bon Scott. Bon Scott had a more naturally gifted high voice and didn't have to over sing as much quite like this uh, to get to that sound, but let's back it up one more time. Take a listen, check it out. Watch the night go up in smoke, rock on. Watch the night! Right? And say, watch the night! Watch the night go up in smoke, rock on! Right? So he's going from a lot of head voice, falsetto, to chest and back. And we think of him as being this guy that he pulled a lot of chest through the sound. No, but he did have a lot of good production in the studio. And we're going to do that in a minute. I'm going to play this and it's going to kind of blow your mind how much of a difference that makes. All right? Let's continue. On. Drive me crazy, yeah. Hey, no serenade, no fire brigade, just a pyromania. Come on. So do it with me. Go in head voice. Ah, ah, ah. Go in head voice. Now, if you've 
if you've done my course or if you followed any of my free tutorials on YouTube, you can reinforce your falsetto to sound like your chest voice. So, uh, no kind of gain, no fiber be just a pyromania, come on! Right, so it's all head voice. Sorry if the lyrics were, <laughs> those were not the lyrics. But anyway, um, but you can hear that it's a lot easier and it takes away a lot of the mystery of this amazing range that really is a lot of head voice, right? Let's continue. What do you want? A coral of voice. Yes, I do. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I did, what do you want? Yes, I do. <laughs> if I walk in, if I walked into a studio, what would the producer be thinking of me? But there's this incredible production, and he's kind of just singing to the vibe of the production. He's kind of letting it uh, do all the work. For those of you out there too, I don't know if you guys have ever seen any really cool uh, black churches, you know, black African churches where uh, the pastor, lead pastor, you know, sings and the church is these great choirs, right? And you'll hear the choir go, and the pastor go, I said a man and I said a man and, and he's kind of like doing an echo and the church itself is doing the main melody or carrying the bulk of the heavy, of the heavy load of, of what's going on, what's being sung. And he just kind of does these stabs, but it makes him sound like a monster because he's got all this production behind him, vocal production, and in a very similar way, uh, that's kind of what's going on here. So, oh, let's go, let's strike a line, we're gonna blow like dynamite. I don't care if it takes all night, gonna set this sound alight. Oh, Come voice. on, what do you want? Hear the multi track, all right, all right. Okay, you hear all that doubling? Oh yeah, yeah! Right? So he's in totally in head voice. He's not he's not given a lot of chest in the sound. There's a lot of effect and a lot of double. Now, I have known several mix engineers and tracking engineers that have worked with Mutt Lang, and I know that they have hundreds of tracks going on for background vocals. That just happens to be a little bit of some flavor for the lead vocal, and there's actually a lot more than what is being played here. Um, and they would sing it over and over and over. And even the way they panned it, a lot of times they panned a lot of the stuff as center information, so it kind of had like a, a phasing, flanging effect, and it didn't have necessarily the big choral vocal sound in the when they were doing the leads, um, because then when they did the choral vocals, they did both. They did um, this unison direct center information, they had this like almost sound like a gated reverb, uh, the way it was done, and then they sang it in different timbres. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute if I can remember. Uh, in fact, I'll do that now so I don't forget. So in the background vocals, they would have like smoky kind of voices too. So they would sing in the maiden, uh, uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. And they'd have all these different timbres of whispers and and different you know um, octaves they'd sing in in different ways that the voice you know would be bright or dark or shouty or not shouty um, and they would mix this all together to sound like these giant gang vocals. That is one of the ways that they got that sound along with a lot of gated reverbs. So anyway, I'm glad I didn't forget that. So at least you know from a technical aspect how that was done. Um, let's move on. Rock of ages, rock of ages. Now did you rock of ages? I want to play this back and I want you to hear how I'm gonna say thin and small the sound actually is okay how thin and small the sound actually is take a close listen this is not what you remember in the mix you remember this giant vocal with this giant band but that's not actually the way it really is and this should be comforting for you and me as we go in to try to reduplicate the sounds that this is how it's done it's kind of Kind of magic, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right? Here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rock of ages. Rock of ages. Still a rolling. Keep a rolling. Rock of ages. Rock of ages. Now, I don't know what that chirping is. I don't. Rock of ages. Rock of ages. It almost sounds like auto-tune, but they didn't have auto-tune back then. Um, and so it might have been a punch that he wasn't able to go from his head voice to his chest voice. So he'd go, rock of ages, rock of ages. Cause he couldn't go, rock of ages. 
and he couldn't connect the two is probably what happened. I don't know for sure, but it sounds like it might be something like that because every one of them sounds punched. Let's go back and listen to the word ages and listen to the way it sounds like it yodels or chirps on that sound. Check it out. Here we go. Rock of ages, rock of ages. Hear that? Still a road. Not fair. Keep a rolling. On the second road, Ed. Like, listen to the second one, right? Rock of ages, rock of ages. Still a rolling. Okay. Keep a rolling. Uh, rock of ages, rock of ages. Still a rolling. Rock and rolling. Now, this also tells us something else about the track. It's exactly the same. He didn't even sing it twice. He only sang it once and they flew it in from one section to the next. So that's also very telling. I mean, he's not even singing the song end to end. Again, I'm not here to, to diss on, on Joe Elliott. He's awesome. He's Joe Elliott. I'm just Ken Tamplin. I'm just going through, you know, exactly what happened, exactly how I hear it, exactly, you know, all the different effects and tricks and ways, secrets of, of, of singing, right? I'm showing you exactly how this was recorded. We got the Got the glory! You hear all those different voices going on, right? You have several voices. It's not a single voice. Just say you need it! And if you need it, say yeah! Woo yeah! <laughs> Let's keep going, sorry. Big instrumental. At least it's cons consistent with the song. Now listen to me! I'm burning, burning, I got the fever. Now, burning, burning, all the vocals, there's like several voices there. It's cut at I've got the fever. Check it out. <laughs> Check it out. Here we go. Two, three, and... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now listen to me. I'm burning, burning, I got the fever, I know for sure, there ain't no cure, so feel it, don't fight it, yeah. go with the flow, now a go with ya, go with the bro, you can hear another punch there, no cure, so feel it, don't fight it, yeah. go with the flow, and I, give me, give me, give me, give me one more for the road, yeah. I also actually appreciate the fact that this isn't auto-tune and it's not in a world that was auto-tune because there's a rawness to it that's really cool. Um, it's just like some guy just, you know, hacking it out and, and making it through. Uh, and so there's a lot more honest than a lot of the music that's going, going on today. <laughs> honest, I mean, if you're flying in vocals here and flying in vocals there, how honest could that be? But in, in the context of this, it's a lot more honest. What do you want? Uh, you betcha. I hit it. Okay. Ta ta ta. Ta ta ta. I mean. See the passenger. Okay, some backward masking. <laughs> Okay, now that's a lot of Mutt Lang production, bringing stuff backwards because it, it brings intensity to the downbeat of a verse. Shock of ages, right? So a lot of the Beatles did a lot of this. A lot of people did a lot of Ole Yolo. Like uh, there's a lot of uh, albums that did that. It's been, and it was kind of started more around the Beatles era. Uh, and they're kind of using that technique here. Jazz, rock of ages, still a road. So it's the same thing, flew it in. They didn't re sing it. Rock of ages. You can hear it. Rock of ages. ages. Still rolling. That's different. Rock and rolling. We got the power. Got the glory. That's different. Just say you need it. And if you need it, say yeah. So just before, and if you need it, say yeah, that was a punch. You could clearly hear the punch. In fact, you can even hear the clicks of the engineer when he starts and stops the tape. If you listen really closely, you can hear, or the ambient noise, whatever it is, between the punches. Just say you need it, and if you need it, say yeah. 
yeah. Hear that? Say yeah. Say yeah. We're gonna burn that damn place down. Yoo-hoo. Down to the ground. You got all those extra voices too. <laughs> All right, so I mean, that's basically it. So again, it, it demystifies a lot of these things that we build up in our head as just being like crazy wow. So I'm going to stop the tape here because I want to move back and, and get the camera a little bit closer to me because I want to point out some more things as we go through right here and we um, do the vocal, the dry vocal. I'm going to add some effect to it and then you're going to hear how it sounds like affected and you're going to go, wow, what a trip. Okay, so let's do this now. Okay, I've set up four buses for four different effects that I'm going to use on his voice, kind of like what I hear on the record. Though I'm not going to use any gated reverbs because that those are really time intensive to do right. Um, and then also I'm going to put a doubler. I'm actually going to create a doubler and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. Um, and uh, then we're going to kind of gently mix that in with some, uh, uh, these will be the effects. A long hall reverb, a medium hall reverb that's got a lot of the... Um, low end on both of them rolled off like right around a hundred cycles i'm rolling off a lot of the thickness of the sound of the reverb so they're not tubby and thick and you know t like a tiled room or something and then i've got a very short ambient reverb and then i've got a delay that's set approximately to the beat of the song okay so i'm gonna use those four effects and i'm gonna create a doubler now let me show you how i'm gonna do this here let me grab this over here Sorry, I should have done that first. Now, here's here's the song, and we've got this this here. I've got the whole thing here. Now, they actually had it in stereo um, from. Sorry, I don't mean to have my back to you, but they had they had it in stereo. It's actually not really in stereo. It's a, a mono sound. So let me go back here. Hold on. And I'm just gonna grab one one track. I'm copying a track. See, there's a copy. Now, if you watch what's gonna go on here, I'm gonna paste that copy of the solo mono-centered vocal. I'm gonna paste that to another track. I'm gonna paste it to a single track of its own, and I'm gonna push it back one frame, okay? One frame. Then I'm gonna take the same track to another track, and I'm gonna paste it and push it back two frames. Okay, so one frame and two frames. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pan those hard left and hard right, okay? And before I add any effect at all, I'm gonna go ahead and get a mix with that in it so I can kind of hear what it sounds like to see if I'm kind of in the ballpark, okay? Now, we don't wanna add too much because it could make it too thick in your mix, but it's definitely there. Now, some other tricks you can do with this also is you can roll off a lot of the low end of your doubler so it doesn't double up on the low end itself and just has just a little bit of imaging for the voice to be a lot fatter in the mix. Now. I don't usually add effects on the doubled vocals because there could be some phase cancellation in the reverbs themselves or in the delay. So be really careful. Um, that may or may not be true for some of the room tones and you can kind of play with that. So I usually leave it kind of bone dry and just kind of bring it into the mix a little bit and use all my effects for the single monoed vocal so that I don't get any sh sh phase shifting or phase cancellation within the reverbs themselves, okay? That might sound complicated to some of you guys out there, but you audiophiles, you know what I'm talking about. This will be helpful. So let's start with, with just getting up that, that sound that's coming up. Now, I'm putting this on playback, so every time I hit play, I won't be able to talk, so uh, otherwise it's gonna feed back because I'm listening and monitoring at the same time. So um, bear with me, and we'll just do this together. Here we go. <laughs> All right. I got something to say. Yeah? Okay, now, right there, oh, and it's already starting to feedback. Right there, I'm going to show you, uh, in fact, let's start here. I'm going to bring up the doubler so you can see how much I'm adding. Okay, here we go. It's better than a burnout. Yeah. Then fade away. Ow! Look out! Okay, now let's do it real quick without it. Hold on. Hey! 
Ow! Look out! Okay, now we're gonna do Ow, look out again with the doubler. Check it out. Ow! Look out! Gonna start a fire! Okay, hear how fat that gets? It gets really fat. Now, I'm gonna start to add some reverbs. Now, I like to mute my um, doubler first so I can really hear my reverbs. And I only add one reverb at a time so I know about what I'm adding. So, I'm gonna start with um, the room sounds first. So the shortest room first, bring a little bit of that in, a longer room, then the hall, and then the delay. I'm not gonna do each one with you because it would take a long time, but as it's passing, as it's going by, I want you to take a listen to how much bigger it gets. And then I'm gonna replay the whole thing again and I'm gonna add the delay and you're gonna hear it with the delay. Now, when he does the talking parts, it's gonna be a little annoying because it's gonna get a little messy. So they don't usually add delays in the talking sections because like I said, it gets messy. But I'm not gonna take the time to go through painstakingly show you all this. I'm just letting you know in advance, if you're looking to do this at home, don't add the delays in the talking parts, only in the bigger choral parts or you know when there's some real actual singing going on. The other thing too is it's gonna sound like I'm adding a lot of effect, but what's really a trip is when you put it in a mix and you hear all the other spatial dimensions happening from all the other instruments with their reverbs and so forth, it actually, it, you can hardly tell. Like you wanna get it to where it's really um, almost undetectable, but it's there. You take out the, you mute the mix and you hear the vocal by itself, like whoa, listen to all that reverb. Then you put the mix in, you go, gosh, I can barely hear it. I just know it sounds like a big vocal, okay? That's the key to this, so it doesn't sound oversaturated or you know really too wet and sloshy. But anyway, so let's do this um, a, a lick at a time. Here we go. It's better to burn out yeah, than fade away. Ow, raid! Ow! Look out! Gonna start a fire! You know what I'm talking about! Come on! Raid! Now, let's take that same vocal, let's take all the reverbs and delays off of it, and then let's go back and add them again, okay? Here we go, I'm gonna take them all off. I'm gonna take everything off, including the doubler, everything. Everything's coming off. So everything's off, okay? Everything's off, check it out. Oh, let's go, let's strike a light, we're gonna blow like dynamite. I don't care if it takes all night, gonna set this sound light. Come on! Here's with the fact. I'm gonna add the doubler. I'm gonna add reverb one, which is ambient one. Then I'm gonna add ambient two, long effect. And then the delay. Here we go, check it out. Oh, let's go, let's strike a light, we're gonna blow like dynamite I don't care if it takes all night, I'm gonna set this sound light Come on! What do you want? All right! Now, let me show you one more thing, okay? Here I have this mic here, I'm gonna turn this off so it doesn't feed back and I just want to do the same thing with this vocal so you can hear right here what that would sound like now I'm not going to get the doubler because I'd have to record it first and then do the double but check this out rise up gather round rock this place to the ground burn it up right can you hear all that now I've got I can't hear it myself but I know about wait there you go, we should be effectless. So there you go guys, this is how we build, this is how we do it, this is all the mystery behind some of these incredible great artists. And I wanted to do a takedown of this one because this was such a production monster piece <laughs> um, that it would be helpful for you to see how this works, okay? Hopefully this was helpful gang and definitely check out my next video.